with a non-cellular elastomers, like a polyurethane or an epoxy, you get a lot stronger strength. So like pencil strength, compressive strength, flexural strength, that'll all be higher than in a, in a you know, foam. Um, you'll get higher thermal conductivities, right? Obviously, if it's mm -hmm. mostly not air, you're gonna get better thermal conductance through it. And as well, you're gonna get a lot more uh, uh, flame retardancy out of it. Obviously, it's, there's a lot more flame retardants in there than there would be in a foam. So our materials will help mitigate those situations a lot better than a foam would. Hi, I'm Joel Franke with Charged Magazine. I'm here with Luca. Hi, How you nice doing? to meet you. Good to see you too. Yeah. From Epic Resins. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what do you got here? Oh, we uh, got polyurethanes and epoxies for electronics and the EV industry. Okay. So pictured here is a couple of our coating products or ProPreg E240. And there we just got a demo of one of our potting compounds and, uh, you know, typical cell uh, application. Okay. So can you elaborate a little bit on Epic's Re Epic Resin's experience in this market? Yeah, we've got over 50 years of experience. We've been doing both electronics and battery applications for the vast majority of that time. Uh, and we've got a pretty long history of products that have got a pretty good lifespan in, in those applications. Okay, that's great. Now, how do your epoxies and polyurethanes protect EV batteries from moisture, vibration, thermal runaway? Yeah, we formulate our products to withstand the harshest environments, right? So right from the formulation stage when our chemists are working on these things and developing products for people, we make sure that it's gonna pass your heat and humidity test, your thermal shock test, your vibration test, your UL testing, whether you need flame retardancy or RTI, like our 7527, we've got 150 C RTI on. So we take that all before we even release a product. But when you encapsulate a material with one of our products, you are essentially protecting it by completely enveloping it or coating it in okay. our materials that are intended to withstand those situations. Okay, okay, great. Um, can you discuss how these materials enhance batteries' lifespans? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're mitigating uh, thermal stresses or uh -huh. uh, physical stresses, uh, obviously when you're not stressing anything, the, whether it's a battery, a piece of electronics, you, your clothing, yeah. you're not throwing it through the washing machine every day, it's gonna have a longer lifespan. And the same goes with our potting and, and coating and, and adhesive materials. You're either pulling heat away, you're keeping heat in, mm -hmm. or you're ruggedizing it by giving it some extra strength. So, you know, in the case of a battery pack, it might be thermal runaway that you're looking to mitigate. Mm -hmm. And our materials are designed to, you know, take that heat in, mitigate it, and prevent it from expanding on the rest of your cell. So let's say you have a couple, you know, cylinder cells popping off. Our sure. materials are designed to withstand that, you know, event and prevent it from propagating, which means you don't lose your whole battery pack in a sure. big nasty fire. Catastrophic. Yeah, you don't want that. It's the worst case scenario, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what we formulate around and design to protect against. Okay, okay, great. So what is the value of custom formulating potting compounds, like adjusting viscosity and descent and densities for EV applications? Yeah, well, I mean, everybody's application is different, right? Everybody has different designs, different end uses. In the case of EVs, people have different uh, manufacturing processes even, right? Someone might do a step before someone else. Mm -hmm. Someone might do it at the very end. So when you have the flexibility like Epic provides, in, we'll take a formula and design the gel time, the viscosity, the filler, uh, specifically if you wanted a lighter density material but trying to retain those properties. We have filler packages that have different particle sizes and we can use obviously multiple different fillers to achieve a different result with a, either higher density if you want more thermal performance or a lower density if you want to lightweight your material. Um, and that, that's very uh, desirable in you know, the real world. You might already have equipment you're looking to use again, sure. right? Or if, if we're designing in from the very get-go, we might be able to meet those tack times you're looking for, right? You might be looking to make a pack every minute, right? Or every 10 seconds. Yeah. We'll be able to go and say, hey, when you're filling this pack up, our material, we can design and get that viscosity low enough that you can fill this, you know, five or six seconds faster. Well, that shortens their, their production time significantly. And then obviously gel times, you don't wanna be waiting around for your stuff to cure. Well, we can make that a lot quicker and make it so that you can start shipping products sooner. Okay, great. So why are non-cellular elastomers superior to foam? Yeah, that's always <laughs> a hot topic, isn't it, right? Yeah. Foams have a very niche application, right? Okay. Uh, they, they have the major thing that they benefit from is low weight. But at the same time, if you've got low weight, it's mostly air in there, right? What are you really getting from a foam? 
well, you're getting a little bit of rigidity, right? You're getting that little, you know, structural support, but it's not as much as something that's a big old block of material, right? Mm -hmm. With a non-cellular elastomer, like a polyurethane or an epoxy, you get a lot stronger strength. So like pencil strength, compressive strength, flexural strength, that'll all be higher than in a, in a you know, foam. Um, you'll get higher thermal conductivities, right? Obviously, if it's mm -hmm. mostly not air, you're gonna get better thermal conductance through it. And as well, you're gonna get a lot more uh, uh, flame retardancy out of it. Obviously, it's, there's a lot more flame retardants in there than there would be in a foam. So our materials will help mitigate those situations a lot better than a foam would, right? Okay. Uh, 7253, which we've done a white paper on mm -hmm. uh, in partnership with some industry uh, people, it, you can see within that white paper exactly how much better it performs in comparison to even similar materials because we formulated that very particularly, uh, but uh, you, you will see a major difference in that, right? Foams, you usually have to have a harder structure, a lot stronger of a structure as well, because they're not providing any the rigidity. Case, the actual yeah, case. Yeah, the okay. case itself. Whereas our materials, you'll be able to use a, you know, not as expensive case, because sure. we'll be providing that rigidity and extra strength for you. And to be honest with you, not all of our materials are, are, are fully encased. With the foam, they'll probably fill up the whole thing. It'll go, it expands, it introduces a lot of stress when it expands. Our materials, they're liquid dispensed. They don't expand or contract during cure. So you don't get any of those stresses during that. There's no sensitivity to, you know, the specific temperature and moisture because they're not foaming like sure. a foam will, right? Foam, you go five degrees higher, a little bit extra humidity, all of a sudden it's foaming a lot more or a lot less, right? Okay. Depends on your external conditions. So depending where you are in the world, it could be a lot harder to manufacture with. Um, that That's kind of the key benefits of using a non-cellular last over a foam. Seems, sounds like there's a lot of benefits to it. There are, yeah. And, you know, even in certain cases, you might not have to use as much of our materials as you might have foam, right? So we have applications where they're not filling it up all the way, they're only filling up half, a quarter. Just depends on the specific application's needs, right? Okay. So you can get away with some of the light weighting mm -hmm. that you might lose by going to a non-cellular sure. so solution. But, you know, there are ways to mitigate that as well. You might not need to fill it up all the way. Okay. Yeah. So for all those that are going to watch this after the show, can you tell them where they can find out more about your product? Yeah, for sure. So on uh, our website, www.epicresins.com is a great place to start. Okay. Uh, we, whether you're you know, designing an EV, a heavy duty EV, or you're in electronics whatsoever, we'll be able to assist you no matter what. Uh, obviously we're at the show at booth 2818. So if you're coming on down, you'll have a lot of us here willing to sure. help you out. Um, but our website and the contact list form there is always a great place to start. You usually hear from someone within 24 hours. So. So we're talking automotive, off-highway equipment, boats, planes, yep. anything, anything that'll think move. Of. Yeah, Epic's okay. really centered around the electronics world. We even do other applications as well, more industrial type things too. Okay. So we're really in almost any market you could think of, but we have a heavy focus on obviously the electric and EV markets. Okay, great. Luca, thank you very much. That was a pleasure.